RuneScape is all about grinding bosses for loot, pets, and boss logs. Okay, it's 99% about those things. Players spend a lot of time bossing for various reasons, and you most definitely do too. And as good PVMers, we're always on the lookout for things that make our time bossing easier. One of my most recent accomplishments on my Iron account is level 120 Slayer and the cape that comes with it. I'm pretty happy about this, and I've been using it for my benefit at a few boss grinds that I'm currently doing, so I wanted to share this with everybody. And I want to explore whether this cape is worth grinding 120 Slayer for, just for your specific boss grinds. Good day, everybody. So while the level 120 Slayer cape is super cool, what we're really talking about today is the Slayer helmet boosts that apply to certain bosses and how the level 120 Slayer cape can help you choose tasks faster to get the task you want for the specific boss you're grinding. If you don't already know, wearing the level 120 Slayer cape when getting a Slayer task from a Slayer Master gives a roughly 1 in 5 chance that the Slayer Master will let you choose your own Slayer task out of whatever Slayer task you want, which is amazing. And while I'm on the subject, there is a known bug with this, actually, just for your info that I don't believe has been fixed yet. If you have your Slayer Master Cape in your uh, Max Cape, as a perk on that, wear the 120 Slayer Cape anyways when talking to a Master, because there is a known bug where if it's in your uh, Max Cape, the chance is much lower that the Slayer Master will let you pick your task, so that's just for you to know. The Slayer Helmet, especially when fully upgraded, offers pretty big boosts to all your combat styles. One of the biggest combat boosts possible, actually, and if this can apply to bosses that you're grinding, that's amazing. So, before we get into whether or not the grind for 120 Slayer is worth it just for this, I want to walk you through which bosses the Slayer Helmet does and does not work on, because I thought I knew had this down pretty well, but I looked through the wiki and I was surprised to see that some bosses are and are not affected by the Slayer Helmet in the way that I thought they were. So, just quickly going down the list of bosses here. Araxi is a spider, but is not affected by the Slayer Helmet. The Arc Glacor is interesting. The normal mode Arc Glacor is affected by the Slayer Helmet, and your boost from that will uh, increase your damage and accuracy. However, hard mode Arc Glacor is not affected by the Slayer Helmet. It took me several Glacor tasks to learn this. <laughs> so, that's a good one to know. Uh, Astalarn, Veraklith, and the Blackstone Dragon, all the ED2 bosses, are affected by the Slayer Helmet boost. That is one of my favorite tasks to use uh, that on for PVMing. It helps a lot. Barrows, both the regular Barrows Brothers and Rise of the Six, are not affected by the, Sl the Slayer Helmet boost, even though they are undead. Beastmaster Durzag is unfortunately not an A route for the purposes of sl the Slayer Helmet. Krosis is affected. Just kidding, he's not. The Dagonoth Kings are affected, as well as the Rex Matriarchs. That can make those grinds a lot easier, and honestly, one of my other favorite ways to use the 120 Slayer Cape to pick a task is for Dinosaurs, for the Rex Matriarchs, because I'm still grinding a lot of drops from those um, gals. They're gals, yeah. Anyways, um, if you also have an Amulet of Salamancy, it, these bosses become a joke. Rathus effectively becomes a Lumbridge Cow with negligibly more HP. So it's pretty awesome for that. And when you're done grinding the hearts from them, you can grind the Dagonoff Kings with the Slayer of Helmet boost as well to make that go a little bit faster. General Grardor does not count as an ogre or a goblin or whatever. He is an org, which are extinct, I think, except for him, and those are not a real Slayer task. Uh, the goblin generals do count as goblins for Slayer tasks, but that's not really relevant. Har Akin and Jad do count um, and as a Slayer task creature, and the Slayer Helmet boost for Volcanic creatures will apply to them. Uh, it does not apply to Zook. Calphite King and Calphite Queen are also affected by the Slayer Helmet, especially for Calphite King. This is a big deal. Likewise, Carapac, the Bound in normal mode and hard mode, is affected by the Slayer Helmet on Nodon Dragonkin tasks. Um, I would say this is a must if you're going to grind Carapac, especially in hard mode. Uh, the King Black Dragon, of course, is a Black Dragon and affected. Uh, two God Wars Dungeon 1 bosses are affected by the Slayer Helmet, Kriara and Krill Tetsaroth. They are AVNC and Demons, uh, respectively. And Tetsaroth, or Tetsiroth, whatever its pronunciation is, falls under the cluster task of Demons, as well as Greater Demons, specifically. Legiones, Legions, Legions, whatever, the things that drop Ascension crossbow pieces, those are affected by Slayer Helmet accuracy and damage boosts as well. The Magister is not. You'll get Slayer experience for killing him as a soul, on a Soul Devourer task, but he is not susceptible to Slayer Helmet boosts. Next and next Angel of Death, unfortunately, do not count as Nihils. The Clean Black Dragon does count as a Dragon and Black Dragon. 
Raksha, wouldn't you love it if that counted as a dinosaur task? But uh, Raksha does not, unfortunately. So you get no Slayer Helmet boosts on Raksha. Tarek at the Necromancer is a Dragonkin and an Undead, but nothing in ED 1 or 3 is affected by the Slayer Helmet, actually. And that's about it. So these are the affected bosses uh, that you'd want Slayer Helmet boosts for. Now the question becomes whether or not you should grind 120 Slayer just for this, if you don't have it already. <laughs> Um, there are other reasons to grind 120 Slayer too. One um, really quick tangent thought slash application I can think of for this is whenever new Slayer creatures come out, which will happen fairly often. Um, if you already have 120 Slayer and new Slayer creatures come out with unique drops, like say Armored Phantoms and the Greater Sonic Wave Codex, you'll have an easier time grinding that log or grinding that item yourself if you're able to choose Slayer tasks. For example, um, that's exactly what happened to me. I got 120 Slayer just before Greater Sonic Wave came out, so it only took me a few tasks, um, and I was able to select either Undead or Zimorgal's Undead or Armored Phantoms as my task to make that grind go much, much smoother than it would have otherwise. But back to bossing. The thing that scapers care more about, more about than grinding bosses is the amount of time it takes to grind a boss. And if we're going to talk about the 120 Slayer Cape and using that to select your tasks, we also have to talk about having enough Slayer task points and to cancel tasks you don't want and relying on that 1 in 5 chance that the Slayer Master will let you pick your own task. This does take some time too, so um, this is definitely better if you already have a crap load of Slayer points saved up from getting 120 Slayer. But generally my take on this is that it is worth it to go through the extra few little tasks and get these Slayer Helmet boosts for the bosses that I mentioned here that uh, this does apply to. Um, again, my favorites are the Rex Matriarchs to apply this to and ED2. My iron is still, my poor, poor iron is still grinding all the codexes from ED2 gradually. Uh, greater Barge, Greater Flurry, Greater Fury. Um, those are like stables for melee that uh, are one of the worst grinds on an iron, I think, because it's a elite dungeon and it's very long. So especially because the Slayer Helmet boost applies to not just the bosses, but all the dragons within the dungeon. And typically per task, you can squeeze out about three to four complete dungeon runs. If you ignore everything except for the main dragons and uh, do a few extra tricks, if you have a few extra Slayer points saved up, you can extend the task. And if you have the Premier Artifact as well, you can activate it for one hour to uh, have a chance at not decreasing your Slayer uh, task kill count as you go through. So you can squeeze out quite a few ED2 runs on one dragon task, for example. And... Um, that's all really. That's the end of the video. That's my take. <laughs> uh, my takeaway and my suggestion from this is that if you don't have the 120 Slayer Cape yet, there are a lot of benefits from grinding that one out of everything actually. You will get a lot of nice loot and a lot of nice items along the way, and it will help you with the future boss grinds or current boss grinds that you know you will likely end up doing because you are a scaper. <laughs> um, if you've made it this far and watched all the way through, thank you very much. I very much appreciate your support. If you like this and want to see more fun, uh, helpful RuneScape content and guides, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And I'll catch you in the next one.